Unit 1 will be split into six different lectures. Lecture 1, we will be discussing some introductory remarks regarding regulation and the role of the regulator. The general principles of regulation all start with economic theory. So economic theory of the financial market says that the less intervention you have, the more efficient your market runs. So economic theory kind of says that if you let the market run the way it should, everything will sort itself out and there will be an efficient allocation of resources. However, things don't run the way economic theory runs. You can't ensure that people have the same ethics morals. There will always be people who take advantage of the financial system and because of that intervention is required by authority in the form of regulation. So it says here that market imperfections do arise and this is because of human beings. So if you see an opportunity to make money in the market, you will go ahead and do that. So regulation is there to protect consumers that have less knowledge about financial markets than the people that are in charge of them. So the government will create a regulatory authority and authorize them to go through and implement the legislation according to the government's policy. However, regulation always comes with a cost. The cost could be social, it could be financial. If something doesn't work out and it needs amendments, there are always costs involved. So the government first has to see how those costs will affect the market before deciding to implement legislation. So as it says here on the slides, not all sections of the economy are regulated. So I have given the example of the over-the-counter derivatives market. At the moment, there is legislation being tabled in Parliament to regulate the sector of the economy because after the 2007-2008 financial crisis, people were saying that because the derivatives market was so unregulated, that is what led to the crash of the financial market. However, there are views both for and against regulation, so keep that in mind. So when you think about regulation of the market, you must remember that instruments are being traded between people who have the knowledge. So it's not always necessary to regulate. However, as soon as consumers and normal people like you and I come into the financial market, there is a need for us to be protected. The regulatory authority sometimes forms part of government and other times are an independent government agency. So, for example, here in South Africa, we have the Financial Sector Conduct Authority. This was previously the Financial Services Board. It regulates the non-banking sector of the financial markets in South Africa. So when it comes to trading and things like that, the Financial Sector Conduct Authority will regulate that. They are independent of government, however, they do report to the National Treasury. So when monetary policy is being implemented, they are informed about what is happening in the non-banking sector. And the reason why you have this authority there is because you have sector experts that are there to overlook and ensure that the regulation that is put in place is followed. You also have self-regulatory organizations, and here in Johannesburg, our stock exchange is a self-regulatory organization. So it operates under the supervision of the regulator. So the reason why it is regulating itself, in essence, is because they are experts on that particular exchange. So they come up with their own exchange rules, their requirements to enter and things like that, as long as it falls within what the Financial Markets Act says. So they cannot do anything contrary to the Financial Markets Act, but they can have more stringent regulation than the Financial Markets Act.